What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about a couple of things. It's not really going to be like a complete guide to the wavetable system in Serum because it's kind of so advanced, but I want to talk about a couple of cool workflow things. One really cool thing that I discovered or that was uh, brought to my attention, we have a thing here called Diffuser, which is a filter that is kind of based on a very similar system to Disperser. So I've done several tutorials on Disperser and kind of how to apply it to your baseline to get some really nice kind of wave shapes. But it's kind of always been a bit of a process to kind of resample and drop it back in, unless you have Faceplant, which has this kind of thing kind of built into the Wavetable Editor. But I want to talk about a really cool technique that I've kind of um, started using that allows us to really quickly turn this into a wavetable. And of course, that's the resample to oscillator A or B. Um, and so what that does, that basically just records a section of audio running through the synth and then just reapplies it as a wavetable in the synth. But I want to talk about a couple of things which we want to do. We want to kind of set up before we start resampling. We probably want to turn the phase randomization to zero so that when it starts the resample, it always starts at the same time. So we get a more predictable result. And for diffuser or disperser in general, I've kind of found a best result when key tracking it here. So what that means is that this cutoff is going to be applied. So like the MIDI key that goes into the synth gets applied to the cutoff. However, by default, I don't think that Serum's cutoff is like where it's supposed to be for uh, key tracking purposes. So for example, if we hit A on the keyboard, it's not actually, you see here, if we, if we hold the mouse down, we can actually see what the frequency is set to, but also what that key track amount is. And the A should be around 880 or 440 or 220, 110, et cetera, et cetera. So we can actually adjust this till it gets to any multiple, like 110, Let's just hold shift 110. And so now it should key track close to uh, as close as possible to the MIDI input, right? And so now let's resample. Let's open oscillator B. And so here I often find that um, because we actually forgot to adjust the attack a little bit, we get this one. The first frame is often a little bit quiet than the rest of the frames. You can see here we got like a nice dispersed saw wave. These are really, really cool to create like chunky bass lines. Okay, so for, for bass lines, I usually use something static like that, you know, or for Cytron's bass lines specifically. But we can do interesting things, you know, you're not just limited to doing exactly that, you know, key tracking it that way, using this amount of stages, you can kind of adjust this um, to fit what you're looking for, right? Um, but we can do really interesting ways to kind of come up with unique wavetables by kind of just resampling and resampling and resampling. Um, adding modulations and stuff and kind of coming up with interesting movements of this shape. So what I actually want to do here is you see like most of the time the shape is pretty much the same. We can just leave it here, for example, like in the middle. And now let's create some movement on this wave shape. So like I said, because the attack, it was a bit of attack, that first frame was quieter. So we can try to turn the attack down. And then let's use an LFO. Let's set this to one bar. And then let's use an upward ramp like this. And then let's apply this to like the cutoff. And we can apply it maybe to the resonance as well. And we need to set this to go through the filter here. Okay, so let's resample this to oscillator C. We've got this really weird snaky wave shape. But you see here, what's happened is it goes like this and then this part, this is actually the beginning of the wave cycle. It's this part here. And that 
is because this randomization was on. So that's why we actually want to set random to zero. And when we have stuff like this, we want to align it so the wave cycle starts at the right place. So now when we resample, it should be more predictable. Yeah, there we go. You see the wave cycle starts at the right place. We have that weird wobbly movement. Let's just keep going. Let's resample that again. Resample to oscillator B. Oh wait, we didn't we didn't set the randomization. Resample to oscillator B. So usually what I do is I'll kind of find a couple of these spots in the wavetable which sound kind of good. So then let's actually just go in and just randomly remove. I'm not gonna cherry pick right now. Can kind of drill down to like 10 remaining wave shapes. Some from like here, just so we have a variety. And so what we can do then is we can make use of the warping to get a more smoother sort of curve when we modulate that. Uh, okay, let's try this now. Morph, let's try spectral. So this works with the effects as well. So here, for example, we can apply like some stuff like chorus, distortions, that kind of thing. Uh, let's maybe go hard clip. High pass filter. Let's add a bit of movement here. And then let's resample again. What I want to do is just put something like a more normal filter here. Just so we can see this distortion like really working on that waveform. Let's add maybe another distortion here. And let's say, uh, add a little bit of movement to that filter. Okay, let's resample this. Uh, <laughs> Okay, with this one, we can maybe turn these effects off. So we can just, in the mixer, go like this.
Okay, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. And if you want to support what I do here, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.